<laughs> With Gilligan and Skipper to the millionaire and his wife, the movie star, Professor and Mary Ann, he from Gilligan's Island. I put this shirt on and I just started thinking about Gilligan's Island. So, have the song, man. It's classic. Classics, good stuff. All right, let's go. We are now entered into phase two out of our four phases of the course. Phase two starts out and goes into completely into forces. This is um, historically, I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this since the 1920s. And I know that students in first semester uh, physics find forces to be one of the, if not the most difficult thing. So pay attention. All right, pay attention, here we go. It starts out very simple, and you, you should feel good about yourself until later on when we do the problem solving. But for now, let's dive in. Actually, we've already segued into this. We did the force of gravity, universal gravitation. That was part of the next unit, and I said that that will be a segue into the unit on forces because gravity is a force. And you might say to yourself, oh yeah, that's right, I remember that, doing force of gravity. Yeah, we figured some stuff out. Good, 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 I'm glad you know, and remember, Force, what is force? A force, be with you, okay? Mm, Jedi mind powers, mm, mm, mm. I, I'm working on being a, a Jedi Knight. Okay, I think I've got it. Now, a force is any push or pull right, that causes something to accelerate. So if I push on something, or I pull on something, or if there is a push, and it have to be me, I mean, sort of gravity pulls on things, uh, you can get, uh, that, that's an attractive force. You can get repulsive forces, okay, things pushing away, electrostatic forces, magnetic forces. So we have any force that can cause something to accelerate, that's what a force is, okay, push or pull. That's pretty simple. Now, we are going to, we talked a little bit about the force of gravitational pull, and I mentioned in the, uh, Last, actually, the last video I did, that, that gravitational force of attraction between you or any object on the Earth and the Earth is weight. That's called the force of weight. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Get it? Wait a minute. Wait. All right. So we used an equation, and I did show this in the last video for weight. So there is a difference between weight and mass. There is. A lot of times we use the two words analogously, like if we had a balance, you might say to your lab partner, yo, lab partner, could you please go and weigh this on the balance? Now, technically, you're not weighing something on the balance, because the balance is, is measuring mass. It's measuring, actually, inertia and mass. But if you say, go weigh it, and we know what you're talking about, and nobody makes fun of you for that, and it's okay. But technically, there's a difference between weight and mass. And mass is part of the weight formula. So weight has to do with mass and gravity. And if you don't have any gravity pulling on something, like a planet Earth or um, you know any other planet, then you don't have weight. There's no weight. So you can be weightless, it's possible, uh, but you cannot be massless if you exist. So mass is an intrinsic property of something. Weight is the oral gravity on something. Um, I weighed about 100 and, well, too much, actually, too much sitting around with not being in the classroom physically with my students. But, um, you know, I've gained a little weight in the last couple of months. So I now weigh about 198 pounds. So 198 pounds, um, hmm, that's my weight. Now, if I wanted to lose weight, I could either be more active, eat less, do both, or I can go to the moon. If I wanted to lose a lot of weight fast, I'll just get on some SpaceX rocket and head to the moon, and boom, I'm only weighing around 30-something pounds. What? Oh, man, you had a sweet diet. You just lost 150-something pounds in one day. Yep, 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 yep. You see, you and I both know that what you really want to do when you go on a diet is you lose mass. We don't say that. But you really are losing mass because weight, you want to lose weight, just go to the moon, okay? Just get in your car and drive there. Yeah, yeah, that's how you lose weight. So because we know that weight has something to do with gravity. All right, so they're not the same, but weight is a force. We can measure it in the terms of what are called newtons. And a newton 
Not a, it's not a lot of force, and it takes four newtons, a little more than four newtons equal one pound. And a pound isn't a lot of force. Okay, you know that. So we kind of discussed this, just to reiterate, go through it again. So weight, mass, not the same thing. Weight is a force. It's a pull uh, from the gravity of the Earth on you. Of course, my weight would be different if I went to the moon or Mars. All right, moving on from that, little review. What do we got on list? Oh, we got our list. Here's our list of things that we're doing today, right here. All right, that's what we're doing. So we've got forces, force of weight, weight versus mass. Now we come to the big guy. The big guy, Newton. Already mentioned him. Already mentioned that he was perhaps the smartest scientist in the history of scientists. Uh, and he did a lot of stuff. Universal gravitation, already went over that. He also did the following. Newton's laws of motion. Motion, it's an Italian word. Motion. Laws of motion. All right. So Newton uh, developed, well, he discovered, I mean, really, these laws of motion exist. We just don't think about them. Right? And now what we do is when we discover them, we put them out there going, hey, this is what happens all the time. These are laws. And here are the three laws of motion. And there are three of them that you need to know. Law number one, it's called the law of inertia. And I'll just write inertia for short. Now, actually, the law of inertia is, uh, I'll put it, okay, here, here are some layman terms for you, the law of inertia. If something wants to just do whatever it's doing, that's what inertia is all about, Charlie Brown. What do you mean? Well, if something is sitting, thank you, demonstrating inertia. Thank you right there. It just wants to sit, doesn't want to do anything. If something is moving, <laughs> it just wants to keep moving and doesn't want to stop. So something wants to keep doing whatever it's doing. If it's moving, it wants to keep moving. If it's just sitting, it wants to sit. And it won't do something different unless you force, there's the word, force it to do it. So if I want to get this marker to move, I gotta put a force on it. Otherwise it won't. And <coughs> so if the marker is moving, so we get it moving, it comes back and I stop it. So it's moving, I gotta put a force on it to stop it. <coughs> All right, so inertia is one of the laws of motion. It's usually the first one that's stated. So and the, the, the technical way of saying it is that an object at rest will stay at rest. An object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Okay, that's the law of inertia. Okay, second law. I would argue <coughs> probably the most important one for the next several days of videos, this one right here. F is equal to MA. I always say FMA. Come on. So 10 years from now, you're walking down the street, I'm walking down the street, and it's too late for you to avoid me. Then all I want you to do is just say, Fama, man, Fama. All right, leave me alone, leave me alone. Get away, you're so weird. Right. If you did that, I'd be so happy. I know I've done my job. So if you remember anything from this course, it's that bad Larry right there. Fama, F is equal to MA. All right, that's the equation that we use to solve multiple force problems. Not all, but multiple force problems. And Newton said this. He said that acceleration of an object is directly related to the force. Okay, what does that mean? That means if I apply a force to an object and make it accelerate, I can make it accelerate twice as much if I apply twice the force. Direct relationship. Okay, very simple, but oh, going to cause you some nightmares. Third law. Action-reaction. And most of you know this. If I were to start it, just like the law of conservation of mass. Most of, if I start that, most people already know it. It's one of those things that's kind of easy to remember. Action-reaction. Okay, let's see if you know it. You ready? Play along at home, kids. For every action, there is correct and equal and opposite reaction. I like to say force. For, I call it force, reforce. For every force, there's an equal and opposite reforce. I like to say that. 
Okay? But we'll go action, reaction. So action slash reaction. All right. So basically what that says, now the, the, the way you can memorize that and go, yeah, action, reaction. I remember that. I've heard it. For every force, there's an equal opposite force. Or I react equal opposite reaction. Easy. But you will forget that in application of problems multiple times. And i got to remind you of this one. So you know it, but do you really know it? Okay? So what that means is I push on you, you push on me. All right? I hit this wall, the wall hits me back. No, it doesn't. The wall doesn't have any fists to hit you back. You see, you're already fighting it, even though you know how to say it. So if I hit wall, wall hits me back. Ouch. You see, I can't feel ouch unless force was applied to me. I apply force to the wall, wall says, ouch. See, I hit the wall. But me, ow. I got hit back as well, otherwise I wouldn't feel the pain. So there was an action reaction. I'll give you another example of that uh, coming up soon. These are known as Newton's three laws of motion. They're relatively simple, but the application of them, not so simple. All right, and we'll keep this video nice and short, just introducing laws of motion and applications coming at you soon. Bye-bye.